Hello guys, how are you? I'm Hadeep Singh. Welcome back to your own YouTube channel. IELTS updates and recent exams. For more updates related to recent IELTS exam writing test topics, listening, reading, practice test, and speaking, you can just work. Please guys, participate in every day listening and reading practice test to achieve your desired band score in your actual IELTS exam. Please hit the like and subscribe button. Press the bell icon for the upcoming notifications. Don't forget like, subscribe and share my YouTube channel and my Facebook page IELTS updates and recent exams. Part 1 You will hear a telephone conversation between an operator and a caller. The caller is reporting a stolen mobile phone. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. Good morning, Z Mobile Services. This is Tess speaking. How can I help? I want to report a stolen mobile phone. Could you confirm your postcode, please, sir? It's CN21EB. Thanks. And your house number? 34. OK. Can you give me the telephone number of the phone that was stolen? Yeah, it's... Wait a minute. It's 07890. 07890 623 623 570 570 Okay, so it's 07890 623 570 Yeah, that's right. Can you just confirm your name? Yeah, it's Thomas Green. Is that Thomas spelt T-H-O-M-A-S? No, there's no H. It's just Thomas. T-O-M-A-S. OK. So you said your phone was stolen? That's right. I reported it to the police this morning. That's good. I'll need to take down your crime reference number. I've got it here. It's CZ... CZ... Dash 17624. 17624. Dash 5. 5. Thank you. Let me run through that again. EZ-17624-5. That's it. Just a few more details. Can I have your IMEI number? Oh, what's that? It's the International Mobile Equipment Identity Number. It's a... Uh... Sorry, I don't have it. Not to worry. We'll deal with that in a moment. I just need to have the date and time your mobile was stolen. That's easy. Between 1 and 2 o'clock yesterday. That's 1 to 2 p.m. on the 16th of August. Thank you. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 6 to 10. Now, I just need a few details of the incident, if you wouldn't mind. Sure. I was in the Bangs Coffee Bar in the city centre. I definitely had my phone with me when I sat down. In fact, I remember checking to see if I had any text messages. But when I came to leave, it wasn't on the table. Did you leave the phone unattended at any time, perhaps to go to the toilet? No. That's the funny thing. Like I told the police, it was very busy in there because it was lunchtime and all the tables and chairs were pushed really close together. There were a couple of other people at my table. Someone must have leaned across when I wasn't looking and slipped my phone into their pocket. Oh dear. Oh no, it's such a pain. I suppose I'll have to pay for a replacement. 
Fortunately, you're covered by our 12-month care plan, so there won't be a charge for replacing it this time. But I have to tell you, if it happens again within the next three months, you may have to pay a fee. Fair enough. How soon can you send me a new one? We've got two options. You can get it sent by courier for next day delivery for a small fee, or we can send it in the standard post free of charge. You should allow about five days for it to arrive. That's a bit difficult. I'm going back to Australia the day after tomorrow to see my parents for a month. Any chance you could send it to their address? No, I'm sorry. We can only send replacements to UK addresses. In that case, I'd better have next day delivery then. OK. So, just to confirm the delivery address, is it 34 Solent Gardens? That's it. The final thing we need to do is to put a block on your phone. You mean to stop the thief from using it? I was wondering about that. What I need to do is put your IMEI number in the central register, which will essentially prevent anyone else from making calls from your phone. Now, the IMEI number is a 15-digit number that you can see underneath the phone's battery. Do you have a record of it? No, sorry. Is there any other way to find the number? Yes. We usually trace it from a call you've recently made. In a moment, I'll put you through to my colleague who deals with that. By the time you've finished with him, your mobile will no longer operate. Good. And with your new phone, I'll also send you a crime prevention leaflet, which will give you some tips on how to protect your phone from being stolen again. Thanks. You've been really helpful. Don't mention it. Just putting you through to my colleague now. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. You will hear a presenter on a radio show. The presenter is reading out letters sent in by listeners to the show. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Now listen and answer questions 11 to 16. Hi, you're listening to Mark Ambrose, and I'll be with you through to midday on Talkback, the show where you tell us what you think about Radio Western. I'm sure you've all heard we have a new boss here at Radio Western, and she's very keen to get your feedback. Well, you've certainly taken her invitation seriously. We'll be dipping into the post bag for your feedback in just a moment, and speaking to a surprise guest or two later in the show. I must start by saying a big thank you to Tony Marsons. Judging by your letters, he did a great job of covering the show last week whilst I was away. Thanks, Tony, if you're listening, and thanks for all the emails asking about my holiday. I had a long, rather boring flight home late last night, but I must say I had a wonderful time. The food was absolutely delicious, and the locals we spoke with were really friendly. Shame about the weather, which was an absolute washout. But you can't have everything, I suppose. And the kids loved it, so everyone was happy. Anyway, on to the first of your letters. Sally from Liverpool is very concerned about the consequences of the cutbacks we've been experiencing here at Radio Western. In particular, whether some of our late-night music shows could be facing the axe. We're force-fed a great deal of pop music throughout the day, writes Sally. And some of your listeners look forward to the more niche musical genres you cover in the evening. Are these in danger when you rearrange the schedule? Not at all, Sally. In fact, look out for one or two exciting new shows over the coming weeks. We've got a brand new classical music show coming soon. And the return of the ever-popular Chris Green with his show on international folk music. And, of course, there's Carol Whittaker's History of Jazz every Friday night. Hopefully, this will put your mind at rest, Sally. Before you hear more of the radio show, 
You have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 17 to 20. John from Leicester writes in to point out that many of our guests on Talkback and other shows seem to run out of time before they have the chance to finish the interview. It happens again and again, writes John. As the programme draws to a close, guests get rushed and many questions go unanswered. Why don't you offer some kind of after-show online channel where the guest can continue answering listeners' questions? I think that's a great idea, John. And, as you go on to say, if it were recorded, people who don't get the chance to hear the live show could catch up later. We'll certainly pass this one up to management. I'm sure a service like this would go down really well on our website. Now, Clive has a question that would be of interest to all us over-50s fans of Radio Western. Clive wants to know why we don't feature more issues related to this age group and cater more to this group's taste in music. As Clive explains, as a regular listener, I'm concerned about your age profiling. Presenters seem intent on covering topics that appeal very much to the 30-somethings, which is great for them, but what about people of other ages? Clive would like to see music shows aimed at the older generation and more on problems facing the over 50s in our consumer affairs shows. Well, Clive, certainly hate to think you're feeling excluded from our schedule. What about other listeners? Do you think we're getting it about right, or is there room for improvement? That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. You will hear a discussion between a business student called Marco and his personal tutor about the courses that Marco should take. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 23. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 23. Hi, Marco. Come in. Thanks. I've got a bit stuck trying to select courses for next semester. Could you help me, please? Of course. Sit down. Oh. First of all, most people just go for the areas of business that they're interested in. But even if something doesn't look very stimulating, it's important that you can use it once you get a job. It's not much good choosing areas that aren't going to be helpful later on. Right. I want to go into management, so I'll need to think about that. And should I start specialising in a particular area yet? I don't think that's wise at this stage. It's better to aim for a wide variety of subjects, especially as management covers so many possibilities. You shouldn't be limiting your choices for later on. Yes, I see. You should also look at how the course is made up. Will you have regular seminars and tutorials, for example, as well as lectures? OK. Some of the lecturers are quite big names in their fields, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Should I aim to go to their courses? Well, remember that the lecturers who aren't well-known may still be very good teachers. I'd say we have a consistently high standard of teaching in this department, so you don't need to worry about it. Before you hear the rest of the discussion, 
You have some time to look at questions 24 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 24 to 30. Good. Well, that's a great help. Now, last time we met, you mentioned doing team management, didn't you? That's right. I'm still quite keen on the idea. Mm -hmm. The trouble is that because of changes in the content of various courses, team management overlaps with the Introduction to Management course you took in your first year. Oh. So what you learned from it would be too little for the amount of time you'd have to spend on it. I'll drop that idea then. Have you had a chance to look at the outline I wrote for my finance dissertation? I left it in your pigeonhole last week. Yes. Why exactly do you want to write a dissertation instead of taking the finance modules? It'll be pretty demanding. Well, I'm quite prepared to do the extra work because I'm keen to investigate something in depth instead of just skating across the surface. I realise that a broader knowledge base may be more useful to my career, but I'm really keen to do this. Mm, right. Well, I had a quick look through your outline, and the first thing that struck me was that you'll have to be careful how you set about it, as the way you've organised it seems unnecessarily complex. The data that you want to collect and analyse is potentially valuable, but you'll need to narrow down the subject matter to make the whole thing manageable. OK. I'll have another look at it. I was talking to Professor Briggs about it yesterday, and I got some more ideas then. For part of the dissertation, I was thinking of trying to persuade finance managers from three or four companies to let me ask them about their company finances. Mm -hmm. If not, I think I'll have to change to another topic. Well, go ahead then. I could give you some names. Thanks. Now, let's talk about practicalities. Your dissertation must be finalised by the end of May, so you should aim to finish the first draft by the end of March. Is that feasible? Yes, it shouldn't be a problem. I'll need to register for the dissertation, won't I? Is that with the registrar's department? No, it's internal to this department, so you just need to let the secretary know. Do that as soon as you're sure you're going to write the dissertation. OK. Then, to analyse your statistics, you're going to need some suitable software. If I were you, I'd drop into the computer office and ask them for a copy. Right. So, if I revise my outline... That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. You will hear a talk about a research project on the tiger shark. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Good morning, everyone. Today I'm going to talk about the research project I've been involved in on the tiger shark. First of all, some background information. The tiger shark, also known as the leopard shark, is often thought to have got its name from its aggressive nature. But in actual fact, it's called that because it has dark bands similar to those on a tiger's body. It is a huge creature, 
growing up to lengths of six and a half meters. It can be found just about everywhere throughout the world's temperate and tropical seas, but it is most often found along the coast rather than the open sea. In terms of feeding, tiger sharks tend to be most active at night and are solitary hunters. Their preferred prey includes other sharks, turtles, seabirds, and dolphins, to name but a few. However, it's not uncommon to find garbage in its stomach. This is because it tends to feed in areas such as harbors and river inlets, where there is a lot of human activity. Now to the project itself. We are particularly interested in some studies that have been done in the Rain Island area. Observations here have shown that there is a large population of tiger sharks present in the summer during the turtle nesting season. However, during the winter months, the sharks disappear. So we decided to do some of our own research there. The first step was to tag a number of sharks so that we could follow their movements. To do this, we first needed to catch the sharks. Early in the morning, we baited lines with large bits of fish and set them in place. These lines were then checked every three or four hours. If no sharks were caught, the baits were replaced. Once a shark had been caught on one of the baited hooks, it was pulled in close to the boat and secured so that we could carry out a number of brief activities to aid our research. This usually took no more than about ten minutes and was carried out as carefully as possible to minimize any stress to the shark. Each of the tiger sharks that we caught was measured and fitted with an identification tag, and also a small amount of tissue was taken for genetic studies. For some larger sharks over three meters long, we also inserted into the belly a special acoustic tag capable of sending satellite signals while on other large sharks we attached a camera to the dorsal fin to enable us to study the behavior and habitat use of the sharks. After this, the shark was released, and we were able to follow its movements. So what was the purpose of all this tagging? Well, while we were already familiar with some aspects of the tiger shark's behavior and food sources, what we hoped to do in this project was to see exactly what factors affected the migration patterns of tiger sharks and whether it was, in fact, food, weather, and reproductive needs. These are some of our findings. On February 21st, a large female shark, whom we named Natalie, was attracted to our research boat at the northern tip of Rain Island and fitted with one of the satellite tags I've just mentioned. No transmissions were received from Natalie between April 2nd and April 29th, indicating that she didn't surface to feed during this period. The area in which she was last reported is very shallow, suggesting that she may have changed her feeding preferences during this period to focus on prey found on the sea floor. We also made a number of other discoveries, thanks to the various transmitters we used, it seems that tiger sharks move back and forth between the ocean floor and the surface quite often. This may help the sharks conserve energy while they swim, but it probably also helps them hunt, since this movement back and forth maximizes its chances of not being detected by its prey until the last minute. So far, our findings have not been conclusive. However, we have gained some very interesting insights into the behavior of tiger sharks and are now hoping to develop our research further. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. So guys, don't forget like, subscribe and share my YouTube channel and my Facebook page. I'll update some recent exams for more updates related to recent IELTS exam writing as topics listening, reading, practice test, and speaking, you got guesswork. Please guys, participate in everyday new IELTS listening and reading practice tests to achieve your desired band score in your actual IELTS exam. For more IELTS material, visit my official website, www.ieltsupdatesandrecentexams.com. The link is given below in the description. If you need PDF files of latest IELTS material, 
then please join my telegram channel so guys please write your score below the comment section again thanks for listening god bless you all guys stay tuned stay safe